Joe Biden could be in front of the microphones right now, knowing that this was it was about to drop any day and there would be a statement and there would be a plan. Do you think I mean, and I'm thinking like, OK, Susan Collins could be that 50th vote, theoretically. Right. Uh, I mean, you have races in New Hampshire where this could make a big difference. Um, the uh, maybe even in Arizona. I don't know uh, the although, you know, you get Blake Masters. I, I don't know. But there are Senate races where this could have serious implications for those races because they could be the vote, um, you know, that would have uh, overturned it. I mean, at least unlikely the House is going to we're, we're going to have the House come uh, January, but, but but one never knows. But do you is there do you have have you seen any shadows or <laughs> hints or clues that there are that the there is a brain trust saying, OK, this is how we map this out over the course of the next 30 months, like, it, because. The, you, you, I mean, I think it's very likely that if you have a Republican uh, controlled House and Senate and presidency, that by 2026, which is not that far fetched of an idea, by 2026, there's a federal ban on abortion. Right. And I mean, period. End of story. And. You know, it, you could have, uh, uh, you know, wealthy people in uh, in Brooklyn being like, well, it's not going to necessarily implicate me, but it's not going to be hard to find some, uh, you know, district attorney somewhere in, in a lot of these other states who are going to like, this is the way I'm going to make my name for myself. I'm going to go yeah. after the, the the people who are importing um, the, uh, the, the medical abortions uh, the, uh, from Canada or whatever. Um, so two things. The first is that uh, it's funny as, as we were speaking, Biden Biden um, gave an address and sort of made some of the points that I, I wanted him to make that this was a radical decision, oh. this is an extreme decision, um, and that uh, you know the the White House should do it as much as it can to mitigate it, um, and that this is on the ballot. So this is, I mean, this is this is this is exactly the kind of thing you want to hear. And my, I don't have any unique insight. They're listening but, to the show. <laughs> they're listening to the show, right? In they the heard me. Like a- I, I still think it should have happened like immediately. It should have been sort of like, you know, a decision comes down and then sort of like now an address from the president. Um, but uh, a couple hours. Okay. That's fine. Um, as far as I, I don't have any unique insight, you know, my, my, my assumption has to be that organizations, activists are already doing the work and planning to figure out how to respond to this on the ground for women who need abortions. I think that's sort of their paramount thing for the women who need abortions in states like Texas, right? One of the largest states in the union. See, it's like Florida, one of the largest states in the union. I think organizations are, have been and are working to do what they can to ensure that those women can get abortions. As far as the political question goes though, um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I have to, I have to imagine that there are at least sort of democratic campaigns and such strategizing about this. Um, But I I also happen to think, you know, this is probably the time for real national messaging from the national democratic party for, you know, the, the, the leaders of the democratic party, Biden, Pelosi, Schumer, the most prominent voices to be kind of united on this and say, you know, on the ballot in November, whether you live in Arizona, whether you live in New Hampshire, um, whether you live in Georgia, Pennsylvania, on the ballot in November, it's whether or not the right to an abortion survives in the United States. And so if you want it to survive, cast your ballot for the Democrat. It doesn't matter who they are. Cast your ballot for the Democrat. And if you don't, cast your ballot for the Republican. Um, and sort of just make it, this is this is what the situation is. Um, that, that, that to me is sort of, that... That would be the right approach. The proof of concept here would be the 2021 Georgia runoff elections, where the pitch of Warnock and Ossoff was, if you want additional assistance in the pandemic, vote for the Democrat. If you don't, vote for the Republican. Um, clear choices, clear lines of responsibility. Uh, but it, I, we'll have to see what the Democratic Party's I feel like that lesson. Like. I, I feel like that lesson was learned and stuck with them for about two and a half months. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was somewhere between like 10 and 14 weeks. I feel like that really resonated. And then it just all sort of melted away. They completely forgot that we just pulled off 
And, and, and the thing that people forget, too, is that there was a lot of voters who voted in the presidential election and left, you know, uh, uh, Trump's name blank. And, and I mean, so th- that that runoff election was was even harder in some ways than right. getting to the runoff election to win. And the value of, of saying two thousand dollar check, um, it's it's impressive how people uh, sort of uh, memory hold that in some I'll, ways. I'll say this real quick. I, I just saw that Joe Manchin, uh, West Virginia senator, says he would vote to codify Roe into law. So, you know, there's at least 49 votes right there. I'm sure cinema would be the 50th. Um, and is there a way to put that in reconciliation? I don't. You'd it, you'd have to stretch. It'd be a real stretch, which is why. I mean, the, the what way if you do, were to provide like a ten dollar subsidy? You know what? That would be it, right? You provide provide um provide a a fifteen dollars to every household to purchase uh the um. Are we medicated. in a negotiation, you and I, right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say 20. Uh, no, but, but yes, I mean, 15 bucks per household, right? Um, or something like, a, like that. Uh, you know, abortion uh, provider coupon. Um, yeah, that, that'd that be the way to do it. Or otherwise, you have to get rid of the filibuster. Um, yes. But again, again, this this goes back to sort of uh, how, to, how to talk about this for an election. You know, pretty much... It seems like Cinema and Manchin are the last two Democrats right now who are willing to publicly say they oppose them the filibuster. There are certainly others, but they are the two who are publicly say it. But Fetterman in Pennsylvania has said he would vote to end the filibuster. Um, I think all the Democratic candidates on the ballot the, for the Senate have said they would vote to end the filibuster. And so there you go. You vote for you cast a ballot for a Democrat. We'll vote to end the filibuster. And then on the first day of the new session of Congress, we're going to codify Roe. And then and then that's that's your promise to people. And you kind of you go from there. You run on that. 